Hello and welcome to this video. Today we are going to learn about the newly updated driver node. We will start with node properties and see how each property will define how our terrain will look. So let's start with the simple terrain. So this is what river is doing at default. River will start a sort of water simulation over our terrain and it will fill most of the erosion flows and such. And with the new update we are also getting down cutting with our river. So there are a lot of fun stuff that we can do with it. First we will start with the head water. This basically means how many source of water we have for our simulation. If we set it to let's say minimum one. Then we have only one source of water which is right here. And if we have let's say two. The water starts flowing from here and here. So the more headwaters, the more our origin source for rivers are. Let's set it back to default. Now let's come to the water. So with higher values, there will be more water on our terrain. And with lower values, there will be less water on our terrain. Now let's talk about width. Width is how wide our final flow would be. With higher values, the rivers are wider. And let's keep the depth for now. So what down cutting will determine is how deep or how much our, our rivers are cutting into our terrain. So the more down cutting is the more our shape of the terrain is deformed. So as you can see here uh, as we are getting to higher values these areas will start deforming as well. And with lower down cutting we will have more or less the original terrain. And for the next uh, render water surface let's talk about the outputs of our rivers. So the first output is our terrain and the second is our river depth. So if we were to put a FX node here, we won't see anything by default because the depth is too low for our eyes to see. So we will put a auto level and now you can see that this is where our water is and the brighter the value the deeper the water is. The third output is our surface. If we connect it to our FX and it's not used, uh, it's not supposed to be used as mask. So let's uh, change it to terrain so this is the actual water surface so if we want our rivers to be the exact same in our other 3d applications so for that we will take this output and output it as a mesh or a height map and then apply our water shader on it so to demonstrate this let's apply this uh, to our terrain in Gaia itself so we will combine this let's combine it with the max now since we were auto leveling it let's revert it back if we were to raise it just a little so we can see that these surfaces are directly below where the river is supposed to be now let's come to the depth part so the depth will start to affect our depth output and there is not much changes with the depth so if we have to visualize it let's take a fx node and equalize it if you, if you look really closely then you would see that increasing the depth will increase this just a slight bit it's changing just a little bit and we don't need to worry about that and now this uh, render water surface if you think that your river is very slow or if you don't need to output this surface then you can just uh, turn it off and we wouldn't waste resources trying to output something that we don't even use. And finally seed variation of our river. Let's see how the input for rivers work. So the first input is the input we get for our terrain. The second is for the headwaters. So if we have say this mass and we put this in headwaters that would mean that the rivers will originate from this mask and if we put it into the normal mask that means that the river will be all over the terrain but we will get only the rivers which are affected by the water in this part which is this. Now let's talk about some of the basic techniques that we can use rivers for. The first is simple just put the river node anywhere and it will start carving out rivers in our terrain. We can change all of the settings uh, right here to, to choose what we need. Next and this one is only possible after the down cutting was added. So for that we would take let's say terrain which has a lot of height variation so we can see it clearly. So let's say slump. Okay this seed looks good. And now let's apply reverse to it. Okay before that there is one issue which you can face when applying river to any terrain. That would be best to show with the ridge node there. 
so if you see that uh, sometimes uh, if your river looks like this that it has this uh, sort of flat surface on the sides and does not look good this is because that point is touching ground and river does not have more space to carve it into so for that we would increase the terrain now we are getting our amazing river back now let's come back to our slump you can see there is uh, the similar problem right here we would raise it just a bit and now we are getting some amazing rivers now this technique is all about how we can shape our landscape early on river does not mean we have to use it as water we can use it really early to shape our terrain and then finally use another river at the end to show the water surface so in nature what happens is from where river originates which is the glacier so it could be that after a long time the glacier is melted completely and now the river is dry or because of tectonic plates or some earthquake the shape of our terrain is transformed but since the river was there before it would have still carved out those details so let's take an example for that in Gaia so we increase down cutting so we get these shapes that are carved out because of rivers and now we can do a whole bunch of stuff after that so let's say folding and maybe erosion and now we have these shapes that were originally made out from rivers and now we can add another river and these are the rivers that are currently present now these are following the general shape of the earlier ones but they may be that let's say with folding we, we could have gone the other way and some of the shapes are lost and now the river might be completely different from what the original was but we were only using this to shape our terrain and the third technique it's again based on down cutting there is a great example in quick starts which we are going to use right here let's say you have this river let's decrease the down cutting so let's duplicate it we can get the same effect with the two river nodes or we can use as many as we want but the basic concept is the same we would use a multi combine to combine all those shapes and since we duplicated it so let's change the seed we have just a bit of variations and we'll combine this with a min mode so as you can see that since the seed differs the rivers are still following the general shape of our terrain but at the corner some of the areas would be in the water and we would get nicely carved out details in between our rivers and the next technique is to use river to carve out mountains or canyons into our terrain so for that let's use the ridge so if you see right here we have our river cutting deep into our terrain now with thermal shaper we can add concave or convex details in our terrain and with reverse it created this apex right here so if we were to do erosion on this and we get this sort of amazing valley and we can now put our river in between the valley after river we get this amazing shape with a bit of like a cliff area around here and for carving out mountain let's take a purlin and now with purlin our river is cutting and making these deep deep grooves which thermal shaper can then smooth out and add these amazing peaks here and there then we can do some other stuff and, and we can see we already have our beautiful looking mountains here. Now that's all about reverse node. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.